Hello everybody, welcome back to the From Me Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about 25 plus console commands that any PC player really needs to know from day one. Earlier today we published a video related to how to enable cheats, and that is going to be key to several of the console commands that we're going to talk about in this video. In addition, I published another video related to how to enable the dev console itself, and that is also going to be key with respect to being able to get to the dev console in order to enter these commands. So if you haven't watched either of those videos, I want to put links to those up in the upper right corner. Go ahead and go check those real quick. They're really short. I'm also going to put a section in right about here related to how to enable cheats if you are running Steam, because obviously at the time I didn't have access to the Steam version in order to put that information in. So to enable the cheats mode and the skip start videos on Steam, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to your Farming Simulator 25 listing. You're going to right click on that and you're going to click properties. From here under launch options, you're going to hit dash, cheats, space, dash, skip, uppercase S for start, uppercase V for videos. And then you're going to close that out. And then once you launch Farming Simulator 25, it's going to skip the giant's animated logo as well as the start screen and have those cheats enabled so that when you do do some of these commands that I showed today, they will work for you. All right, now that you're fully up to speed with respect to enabling cheats and enab enabling the dev console, let's talk about some of these console commands. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be to turn on or turn off the depth of field. Some people like it, other people don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the tilde key, which on a standard US keyboard or American keyboard or English keyboard, I guess I should say, is typically going to be the squiggly line directly below the escape in the upper left of the keyboard. We're going to hit it once. We're going to get a screen like this. We're going to hit it a second time and we're going to get a cursor. From here, we're going to type enable D-O-F. And then as we type, we're seeing information. And basically this command is expecting either a true or false. We're going to type in false, which should turn it off. And once we've done that, now we can see the trees off in the distance are now crisp. They're not clear. They're not blurry. They're not out of focus. Some people like the depth of field turned on. Others don't. If you don't like depth of field turned on, that's how you can turn it off. If you want to turn back on, well, it's just as quick as going back to the dev console, hitting tilde twice. We can just hit the up arrow. We're going to get to our last command. Now we can backspace out false, and we can hit true. And we're back with depth of field turned on. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is how to buy and sell farmlands from the console. So if we come here to our farmland screen, you know, see that currently we're over here at Farmland ID 65. We could buy that for $307,000. But why spend money when you could just make it happen, right? We also have this farm here, Farmland 66, for $370,000. Well, what if we could quickly and easily buy that without spending any money? Or what if we wanted to sell our starting farm and our starting fields? Well, we can quickly do that with a few console commands. So once again, we're going to hit tilde a couple times and we're going to get up here to our screen and we're going to type GS farm. And now we see we have multiple options. So we could just arrow down until we find the one we want. GS farmland sell. We're going to hit enter. And now it's going to ask us what do we want to do? Well, we're going to type the farmland we want to sell, which is going to be farmland ID one. And now we have just sold the main farm. We can also do this for farmlands two, three, four, and five. And now if we come back in here, you're gonna see that we don't own any of these farmlands. Now we didn't get any money for it, but that's fine. We have dev console commands. Money's not an option. So over here, we can now decide, well, I wanna buy farmland ID 65 and 66. 
Well, convenient enough, there's a GS farmland buy command. And we're going to enter, guess what? The farmland ID we want to buy. In this case, 65 and 66. And we now own both farmland ID 65 and 66. Again, no money changed hands, but that's all fine and dandy. Now, what if we're setting this map up for multiplayer or we just want to go hog wild? We could buy the entirety of the map. So to do that, we're going to go to GS Farmland, buy, but we're going to go to buy all. And we're just going to hit enter. And now we own the entirety of the map. We could do the reverse of this. We could go here to GS Farmlands Sell All. And we could sell the entire map. And now we own nothing. So by the combination of buy, buy all, sell, and sell all, we can fine tune exactly how we want to start our gameplay experience on any map, regardless of what the starting farms are. Regardless if there's buildings on the farms that we can't sell the buildings and therefore we can't sell the farmland, we can just go to the console command and force it to happen. So I'm going to buy 55 and 66 again. And now you can see we own both of these farmlands. Another kind of interesting console command is going to be GS farm land show and when we do that we get a little bit of information up here in the top of the screen we can see gs farmland 65 and 66 is owned by owner one that's farmland id one and single player that is you we can see how big the farmland is and how much the farmland is going to cost if we move over here to let's say a different piece of property we're going to see that information change so this can be a little bit of kind of a diagnostic thing for map makers or so here we go. Now we're close to farmland ID 64 and it says owner is zero. So that means it's not owned by anyone and we can see the price and the size. So that was kind of an interesting feature. It's a toggle on and off. So GS farmland show will either turn it on or turn it off. All right, for the next one, we're going to talk about how you can make bales spawn. And this is going to be pretty interesting. So for this, I've gone ahead and cleared the dev console. That way we can easily see what's going on. And we're going to type GS bale list. And this is going to list out all of the different bale types that are available. So we have round bales, we have square bales, we have cotton bales, we have wood chip bales. We have cotton modules. We also have round cotton bales. And we're going to then use GS bale add. And then we need to specify some information. So let's say we want to add a square hay bale. Well, we're going to do dry grass windrow space. Is it round? No, it's not. So false. And then we need to define the width. So we're going to do a width of 1.2, a height of 0.9, and a length of 2.4. And that's going to be the dimensions of a 240 centimeter square bale. And then it's going to say wrap state, and we're going to say zero for no. And we're going to leave mod name off because we're not doing a modded bale. We're going to hit enter, and there we go. We now have a hay bale. We want another one. We just cursor up enter again and we have another one a third well guess what there you go now let's say we want to change this to be a silage bale that's wrapped okay so we're going to change our dry grass windrow to silage and we're going to change our zero to one with respect to wrap state and there we go. Now we have a wrapped square silage bale. So there may be times where you just need to spawn in some bales. Maybe you're short a few. Maybe you want to feed your animals right at the start 
before you have any hay or anything. This is going to allow you to spawn in some bales and get going if you're in a pinch. Now, another interesting bale command is going to be GS bale add all. Oh boy, there you go. Look at that. So we now have, well, visually, all of the bales. And what well, we can see, what do they all look like? So we have our grass windrow default, our grass windrow with net wrap, and our grass windrow with foil wrap. We have our dry grass windrow, our hay, right, to wrap different ways. Our straw, our unwrapped silage. We have chaff bales, sugar beet bales, sugar beet cut bales, TMR bales. Remember, we have the Goo Veal stationary baler. It's going to be able to make those bales. We then also have our bigger bales, right? And we're just going to keep on going through this list of different bale sizes and a different bale type so that's kind of interesting now this is just going to be for round bales but it's kind of an interesting command to make all of those pop up now this is just for reference these aren't legit bales so i had to pull up a different save game for various reasons but i want to show you another command gs time set And we're going to specify this now. It's a little interesting how we enter this. We're going to specify the time in hours, but we're not going to enter it like we would a clock. We're just going to enter the number of hours. So if we want to make it noon, we're just going to enter 12. If we want to make it 1230, we're going to enter 12.5. Okay. And once we hit enter, we're going to see that the time is now 1230. We're going to have a little bit of visual as the sun progresses into the proper spot and there we go now it's 1230 maybe you don't like to you know do treasure hunts and you want to just know where all the collectibles are well we're going to do gs collectibles show all and we're going to hit enter and now you can see a whole bunch of dots appeared on our mini map we come back up here to our PDA. We're going to find those dots, but they're a lot smaller. And each one of these dots is going to be a location for a collectible. So, for example, we come over here. Right, we have a dot in this general location. So we're going to make our way over here. And I happen to know because I've already found them, but it's right here. Now, something else that I want to show you, it's not really a console command, but it's a key that you can hit F5. Now that you have Dev Console enabled, and F5 was going to show you a whole lot of things. So here we have it showing us physics. Things with collisions or triggers. We can hit F5 again. And it's going to show us various light sources and where the light's coming from. Audio sources, where is the audio coming from? Occluder, so if if there are what's occluding things visually behind it, right? And then F5 again. And we can see basically what's affected by rain. And then back to nothing. 
So if we go back here once again, we can see there's a trigger here. And if we pull up our F1 menu, you can see when we walk into this trigger, we're going to have a collect. So we just collected a table, and that table is now going to be part of the museum. So let's cycle through these F5 modes. Now that dot is going to be missing from our mini-map, as we have now collected that collectible. And there's one less to be found. While we're over here at this production, let's run through a few of the production console commands. So we're going to go GS production. And you can see now we have several production commands. The first one we're going to do is GS production points list. This is going to list us out all of the productions that are currently placed on the map. As you can see, we have 14 productions in this list. The greenhouse for rice saplings is productions owned by owner 15. Owner 15 means that it is dependent upon the land owner. So that land is currently unowned by anyone. So it's owner 15. Whoever buys that land will inherit the greenhouse saplings and then they will own it. So in single player, that means owner of one. In multiplayer, it'd be whatever the farm ID is of the farm who owns that land. All of the others are listed as owner zero, which means they're not owned. Okay. Now it's very important to note the production ID number one through 14 for the commands that we're going to run next. So we're here at the paper factory production ID nine GS production. And we want to set the owner. Okay. We're going to set the owner of production ID nine to one, which is us in single player. We're going to hit enter. And now we own, we own the paper factory. If we go up here and run our list again, you're going to see now it does resort, sadly, the ID. So the paper factory is no longer nine. It's now 14, but we are now listed as owner, owner one. There are two productions at the paper factory, right? We can do paper rolls or we can do carton rolls. GS, production point fill level. Okay, we can set the fill level. We're just going to hit enter, and you can see what it's looking for. It's looking for the production identifier, in this case, 14, the fill level name, and how full is it going to be. And we can fill either by the name or all. So let's come over here to our interactive icon, and let's manage our production. So we have wood as the input, and we have output of paper roll and paper cart. So we're going to do GS point fill level, okay, 14, fill level name, wood, and fill level, let's say 100,000 liters. So give it a few moments. And now we have 100,000 liters of wood in our production facility. Thank you very much. And we can now activate either of these if we want and get them up and running. But we're not done. Let's go here and set the fill level to all and set it to 130 thousand liters okay so our wood is 130,000 liters full our cart and roll and our paper roll is 55,000 liters full we're going to basically fill everything all the way full all inputs all outputs we're just going to hog wild there you go 
So we now have 55,000 liters of paper rolls, 27,000 liters of carton rolls, and that's because, well, the carton rolls have spawned somewhere. Right, so they're not going to be now listed. I believe they spawn over here. Yep, so there's our carton rolls spawned out, ready to go. Other production commands that are of note. GS, production. Okay, this is kind of an interesting one. Print auto delivery mapping. We're going to hit enter. So, we only own one production. So this is a pretty easy list to look at. Fill type wood is distributed to the paper factory. And fill type water is distributed to the rice saplings. We don't own that one, but at any rate, so this can show you. Let's go and buy. Uh, let's buy the flour mill. Why are we going to spend real money? Let's come back here and list this out. Let's buy the flour mill. So seven. Now we're going to have to list it again because it's going to reorder. And let's buy the bakery. Okay, so now we own the flour mill and the bakery as well. We're going to take our flour, right? And we're going to distribute our flour. Okay. And that should send it to our bakery, right? So let's run our print auto mappings. And we can now read this a little bit. That wheat, barley, soya, all that's being distributed to our grain mill. And we can see that our flour is distributed to the bakery. So we can kind of get a listing as to where things are going. Where this is going to be useful would be if you had several factories and you had a fairly complex list of things that were being distributed around. You can list this out and then kind of look through it and really understand where's all that flour going. Oh, I can see it's going to this place, this place, and this place, and it's going to split it out evenly, right? So you can get a good idea where things are going. Now you may think to yourself... How do I move around the map quickly? Especially if you're in a tractor. Right? Well, let's pull up the mini map. And we have a few options here. First, we can use coordinates so our map coordinates so for example in our mini map right here we are at 266 by 1132 to this exact location 266 1132 so let's jump in our tractor we're gonna go GS teleport and we're gonna go 266, 1132. And now we have been teleported to those exact coordinates. Or you may be like, I need to go over to Farmland ID 54. We're going to go GS teleport. This time we're just going to put in 54. And now I'm instantly teleported over here to Farmland ID 54. We want to come back over here to Farmland ID 1. Well, I can just hit that. And I've been transported back over here to our starting farm. So that'll work if you are in a vehicle 
or not. So for example, if I wanted to go back over to Formlate ID 65, here we go. We're quickly teleported back to Farmland ID 65 on foot. Now, let's say we want to change this field. Okay, we want to change the state of field 65. So to do that, we're going to go GS field and we have two options set ground state or set state we're going to talk about set state first so we're just going to go gs field set state now we could define things if we wanted to or we can just hit enter and if we hit enter we get this nice ui so here we have an area to enter the field number 65 is already entered here. We have fruit, so we can pick whatever crop we want. We want to plant sunflowers. We can say, what state do we want the sunflowers to be in? Let's say green middle two. We can set, do we want weeds? No. So we want our weeds to be invisible. Do we want stones? No. We're going to say picked. We're going to say the stones have been picked off the field. Ground type, we're going to say is just, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to say sewn. Ground angles, fine. Spray type, zero. Fertilizer, lime, manure, right? We're going to say none. Spray level, two, one, or zero. Fertilizing spray, state. Right? Zero fertilized, first stage fertilized, second state fertilized. Lime. No lime or limed. Yes, limed. Plowed. Yes, it's been plowed. Roller level. Yes, it's been rolled. Stubble. It's been mulched. Yes. Apply. Presto. We now have growing sunflowers in our field. Okay? We want to change this. We want to make these sunflowers ready to harvest. Boom. They're ready to harvest. We want to change this over to soybeans. And we want them ready to harvest instead. Done. Done. Now let's talk about GS field ground state. Same thing, GS field ground. We're going to hit enter. Now this is more or less talking about what do we want as far as the ground to look like. So we can go cultivated apply and now we have our cultivated ground here back exactly how it was beforehand so we can define how we want the ground to be whereas the other one is more or less designed around how do we want our crop to be in the field if i wanted to make this a giant meadow okay well i could come back here to gs set field state and I can set this to grass. And I can set the growth state to ready to harvest. Once again, right, we're all good here. Apply, and now I have a nice meadow of grass on field 65. We can come over here. We can put down some cow pastures. And we can have ourselves a nice good time. You want to take a nice screenshot, but you want to get rid of the UI? That's easy enough to do. GS. HUD visibility. And it toggles it off. Now you have zero HUD. You're welcome. You ready to get back to the HUD? Just GS HUD visibility. And it turns it back on again.
maybe you need money for whatever reason. You're setting up the save game. You need to buy some land and you'd rather not just use the console commands. You need to add money to your bank account. It can be done fairly quickly. So we're going to go GS money add. Okay. If we define nothing, we're going to get $10 million right away. Or we could come here and we could add a specific amount, 100000 And now we have added $100,000 to our bank account. Or we can come here and we can deduct a specific amount. Like, let's say, $10,100,000. And now we are back to where we were, where we started. So we added $10 million, we added 100000 we deducted $10,100,000. We're back to zero. You want to set yourself up for a start from legit scratch? Well, you can come in here, GS money add, minus, and then enter the amount of money that you have in your bank. And now you have zero dollars. So now you have set yourself up for a true start from nothing. Let's talk about pallets. Okay. So GS... Pallet add. It needs a fill type name, a fill type amount, and then a location that's optional. So we're going to go GS pallet add. And then just for the sake of ease, I'm just going to type something in. It's wrong. And it's going to say, uh, that's not valid. And it's going to list all of the valid pallet types. Very convenient for us. So we're going to go back here. GS palette type add. Hmm. What should we add? Let's add goat, goat milk bottled. So goat milk underscore bottled. And then we need to fill them out. Let's just go with 1,000 liters. We're going to hit enter. And a presto whammo. We have a palette of goat milk. I don't have... Anything to move this pallet around with? What is a guy to do? Well, let me eat some spinach and get some super strength. GS, player, super strength, toggle, enter, enter. I can now pick this pallet up and do whatever I want with it. I can basically pick up almost anything and do whatever I want with it. Because I've now enabled super strength. Once you're done, you want to turn it off. Well, just arrow up, hit it again, and now it's disabled. You like to fly around the map like I do? GS, player, flight toggle, enter. We now have flight mode enabled. Q and J will raise you up. E will lower you down. Q will raise you up. J will turn it back off. So once again, once you have enabled flight mode, Q and J, and that'll get you up in the sky initially. E will raise you, or, or E will lower you. Q will raise you back up. And then, of course, you can just look around as you normally would. Now, W, A, S, and D will move you around. And shift will move you quickly. So here I'm holding shift. And now here I'm not. Now currently, when I enable flight mode, it also enables fast movement. Okay, we're moving a lot faster than one normally would. Well, this can pose a few little issues, and that is mostly around, well, trying to do anything subtle is a little hard when you have flight mode enabled because you're moving around so quickly. Sadly, there isn't a way, apparently, to slow yourself down when you have flight mode enabled. Now, once you're done with flight mode, you can just come up here and toggle it back off. You're going to land back down on the screen. Okay, so if I move normally, right, that's our normal slow and fast movement. 
Or maybe we want to make us move faster. GS, player, super, speed, toggle. Now I can move super fast. And where and how and why might this be useful? Well, this can become useful if you are loading into the map and you have textures you need to cache. And the easiest way to cache those textures is to simply move around the map quickly. So you can either enable flight mode or you can enable this super speed. And then you can just kind of run around the map and get those textures cached in so that then you can do your normal gameplay. Then to slow back down again, we're just going to toggle it back off by up arrowing and hitting enter. And now we're running around normally again. So this is a fun one. What if I could just walk through walls? Hmm. So, GS, player, no clip, toggle. We have just allowed ourselves now to literally walk through walls or literally walk through anything. We're no longer going to be bound by the game's simulated reality. We are a ghost in the machine. So if there is a structure and whatever reason you're stuck, somehow you land yourself behind the collision boundary of the map. Somehow you land yourself inside a building that you clearly have zero business being inside of. Well, just enable the no clip mode and get yourself out of damage, out of dodge, out of trouble, and then come back, re-enable, no clip mode and or disable no clip mode if you will and now well you're not going to run through walls you're back to normal so that's kind of a fun one the next one I need to find a trailer I think there's one up here So, we have a trailer. GS, fill unit add. Okay, we need to have a fill unit index for our trailer that has one fill, fill volume. Okay, we're going to hit one. If we had a seeder that also did fertilizer, well, one might be seed, two might be fertilizer. If we had a trailer that had, let's say, three hoppers, Okay, one, two, and three. All right, but for a simple trailer like this, one. Fill name, wheat. Fill amount, 3,000 liters. Okay, I'm missing a space, sorry. Boom, I've got 3,000 liters worth of wheat. I want to remove 3,000 liters worth of wheat. I just put a minus 3,000 and it goes away. I want to add silage. There you go. I've got now 3,000 liters of silage. Now here are the fill types. Wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflower, soybeans, maize, potato, sugar beet, beet root, carrot, parsnip, long grain rice, or technically it's rice long grain, rice, green bean, pea, spinach, sugar cane, wood chips, sugar beet underscore cut, silage, grass underscore windrow, dry grass underscore windrow, straw, manure, stone, Mineral underscore feed, chaff, fertilizer, road salt, pig food, seeds, olive, snow, forage underscore mixing, lime, and forage. And the reason I wanted to pull that up is because if you want to do TMR, you need to define forage. First, we need to empty the trailer. 
So we need to go back to our silage, minus 3,000. Then we're going to do a forage. So now we have TMR. You don't want forage mixed. Forage mixed is going to be an improper ratio. So once again, we're going to empty the trailer. And there we go. Now there's a few things we can do with respect to our tractor. Okay. So GS vehicle add damage. Add dirt. Add wear. Or add wetness. Let's add damage, and we're going to add 100% damage. You can see now in the lower right, our maintenance bar is completely done. This thing needs severe maintenance. We can come back and we can reverse that by adding negative 100%. And now it's back full. We can go vehicle add dirt. 100% makes our tractor as dirty as it will possibly ever be. Or we can go minus 100 and make it as clean as possible. Okay, we can add wear. So now we see if we have a fully worn down tractor what does the wear mask look like? Same as our trailer. Right? Or we can go back here and we can make that minus 100 and make it pristine and clean again. And then the new one for FS25 is wetness. Oh, we made her wet, right? She's she's glossy, she's wet, she's just been in the rain. We got water droplets all over the place. Our tires are shiny. Or we can remove wetness and make it dry again. So this can be really convenient if we're maybe looking at a mod. And we want to see what the dirt mask looks like, what's the wear mask look like, or other things like that. Now, speaking of the shop, let's go to the shop real quick. You want to take a nice screenshot of this Fent tractor, but you don't want this entire UI. Well, that's easy enough to do. GS shop UI toggle. Now the UI is gone. Now we have an unadulterated look at our tractor we get up close we get personal we can take a nice screenshot of it and do whatever we want without all that annoying ui we want to get the ui back well we're just going to hit gs toggle shop ui and there we go it's back so there's two more commands that i want to show you and then that i think will equip you very well with a listing of commands that can get you through until our good friend of the channel, GTX, can release a Farm Sim 25 version of his Easy Dev Controls. Some folks refer to it as the F12 mod. I refer to name it properly as the Easy Development Controls mod by, again, a friend of the channel, GTX. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go GS Tip Anywhere Add. Okay. And this is going to put a heap of something on the ground in front of us. Let's say we need some potatoes. GS tip anywhere add potatoes. And I want 5,000 liters of potatoes. If I could spell it right, mm, that's the bane of my existence. All right. So it's potato, not potatoes. We now have 5,000 liters worth of potato. Keep right here in front of us. If I had a bucket, I could bring a bucket over here, scoop it up, and do whatever I needed with it. Why do I have a whole giant pile of potatoes out here in the middle of nowhere? This is in my way. I need to get rid of it now. Well, that's easy enough. We don't hit escape. We hit tilting. And we use the other version 
GS tip anywhere clear. Okay. And we need to find a radius around us. And what it will do is it'll remove the windrow or basically remove anything that's tipped to ground around us in that radius. This can be rather dangerous if we are, say, close to a silage bunker or out in a field with a whole bunch of grass, hay, straw, windrow. So be cautious about the radius you give it. So let's give this a radius of 10 meters. There we go. Most of our potatoes are gone. Let's increase this radius to 15 meters. There we go. All our potatoes are gone. Anything within 15 meter radius of me that was tipped to the ground is just vanished. So guys, that is my listing of 25 plus console commands that I think are keen to know from day one. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you have any other console commands that you come across that you think people should know, put those down in the comments below also. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We didn't quite meet our goal of 50,000 subs before Farm Sim 25's release, but we're so darn close. So we should just go ahead and, well, get beyond that and move forward to make another goal about moving to 60,000 subs before the release of the premium, or not premium, but the year one season pass expansion that is next fall. By all means, please also share this video out to other PC players. Console commands are going to be restricted to PC players. Sorry, console players. You just don't have a way of getting to a dev console in order to enter these types of commands. Until next time, happy farming.